Hello everyone. Welcome to the next lecture on the PY question series. Today we will discuss all those questions related to the testing of hypothesis. We will discuss all those questions from the gate 2003 to 2023. Myself Dr. Harish Gar. You can simply follow my YouTube channel where you can find the various lectures on this PY question. So what is the objective is we will see we will cover all those questions related to the testing of hypothesis from the year 2003 to 2023. We will cover all those questions related to the type 1 error, type 2 error, most powerful test, likelihood ratio, ANOVA and so on. So we will cover the 35 plus questions in this lecture related to this previous 10 years papers. So before starting this video, I recommended you, you can simply watch my previous theory lecture related to the type 1, type 2. Uh, this is the concept of the con confidence interval, Newman Pearson lemma, most powerful test, UMP and the most uh, MLE. So, so that you can understand this uh, PY question series in a very, very simple manner. Apart from them, there is a one more playlist called as the PY questions of the CSR net and the gate, where you can find the PY questions of the inner product, PY question on the base estimator, hazard rate, wave equation, heat equation, linear algebra, all in this playlist. So let's start with this video. So first of all, I can simply use the notation that I use in this throughout the video. First one is the H0 is denoted as a null hypothesis. H1 is alternative. Rejection reason is denoted by W or called as the criti critical reason. Now, whenever you are working on the testing of hypothesis, the most common question arises is how you can find the critical reason or the rejection reason. So whenever there is a question regarding the how to find, we always apply the two methods. The first one is the MLE, or sorry, MPT, that is the most powerful test, where this is the reason. H1 is the alternative hypothesis, H0 is here. And L is called as the likelihood function. We all know how you can find the likelihood function, that is the product of the probability density functions over this here. Then you can find this ratio, if it is greater than k, then we can find the value of the x or the relation between them that is called as the critical reason. Another thing is called as the likelihood ratio test. Instead of this h1 over h0, I call as the L of h0 divided by maximum likelihood estimator. Because I taken as a L of h0 in the numerator, so I can take this ratio as less than of k. So the purpose is firstly you can define the critical reason if it is not given to you in this statement. Once you can define the critical reason, then your target is to define the type 1 error called as the size of the test or the level of the test. Then we can define the power of the test and the type 2 error. So we can define the W by using the most powerful test or by using the likelihood ratio test. Once we know the W, then we can define the size of the test denoted as the alpha. It's nothing but probability of X belongs to the W provided H1 is H0 is true. Similarly, you can define the power of the test when x belongs to the w provided h1 is true and the type 2 error is denoted as a beta which is nothing but my 1 minus power of the test. So what is the opposite of this? You can see 1 minus of power of test or I can take it as a complement of here. Now based on these simple three tips and the most powerful test, I can solve all those 35 questions within a 15 second trick. So you can simply join my WhatsApp group. You can scan and join my WhatsApp group for the various discussion part. So let's start with the first one. So look at that. The question is talking about the most powerful test. So what is the target for you? The likelihood function of the H1 divided by likelihood function of the H0 greater than of K. This is your target. So what is the likelihood function? It is nothing but the product of this F of X size. Now what is the H1? H1 is theta is 0, alpha is my 2. So if I substitute here, theta is 0, so this part will be 0. Alpha is my 2, so this part will be product of theta is 0, is a 1. Alpha is 2, it's a 4 e raised power minus 4 xi. Divided by H of H0, H0 is theta is 1, alpha is 0. Then this value will be 0. And then this will be product of e raised power xi. It must be greater than k. Now if from here you can see 4 is a common 4 is to power n e raised to power 4 of summation xi divided by of this is greater than k. Since 4 is to power n is a constant number so I can take on this right hand side it is minus 3 of 
xi is greater than k. Now you can check. Now it's uh, simple. You can take as a logarithm. So logarithm is here. This is log of k. I consider log of k as a c. So what is the meaning of that? Summation of xi because of this negative, it is less than of c divided by three. I consider another constant as a c one. So what is that? You can see the summation of xi must be less than of the c is the right answer of this problem. So most powerful does not exist. Cancel. It is a greater than c cancel. Lies between zero and c one and c two is again a cancel. So remember, we can start from here. This is the critical reason. This is the critical reason. Okay, let zero and two be the realization values of the sample space of the size two from the binomial distribution with the parameter two comma p. Then the value of the likelihood ratio test. H of L zero divided by M L E. Fine. This is your target. Now, H zero. We already know that what is H zero is P of half. Firstly, we can define the L. So there are only two values. These are the discrete number. So you can define the likelihood function like of here. Fine. Then it's a binomial distribution. So you can see it's a two C zero P raised to power zero Q two. 2c2 p raised to power 2 q raised to power 0. So what is that? 2c0 is 1. It's a q square and it's a p square. Fine. Now what is the q? Q is nothing but my 1 minus p whole square of this. Fine. Now you can see h of 0. What is h0? Is p is half. You can substitute here. So the numerator value will be half square and half of square. What is MLE? So you can find the MLE. So you can take the log of l. It is uh, two times one minus p plus two times log of p. So you can derivate with respect to p and put them as a zero. So minus two over one minus plus two over p is equal to zero. So clearly says p is nothing but my half. So this is the value of the MLE at the value of half because this is the value of half. So you can see there is no need to solve because it is a cancel out. It is a one. Otherwise, I can substitute this value here. You can see again, it's a one by two whole square, one by two squares. Again, it is my one. So the right answer is one is my right answer. Look at this another one. So this is the x one, x two, and x three are the random sample from the bivariate normal distribution. Mean is my unknown. Variance, covariance matrix is a positive definite. The p value for the likelihood ratio. Test for testing H naught. That is a mean. This is my sample mean. Fine. So what is the meaning of that? This is a bivariate distribution. So what is the bivariate testing are there? So how you can define that test statistics for the bivariate distribution? So which is nothing but sample mean divided minus of this x bar of this and x bar minus mu because we all knows. This will follows the normal distribution mean, and the variance will be of this for the multivariate distribution. Now you have to define the h zero. What is my h zero? Is mu is zero. So what is that? This will follows chi square distribution over the degree of freedom two. Fine. We all know this is the chi square distribution. So when mu is equal to zero, what is that? This is x bar. So now we target is to find the x bar. What is that? It's a one over three. So it's a one plus four minus five, two minus two plus zero. So what is that? It's a one over three, zero and zero. So it is a zero. Fine. So x bar is also a zero. X bar is zero. Mu is zero. So the difference is also a zero. So therefore, if I consider this is my small t. So what is that? Your target is to find the value of p value. So what is the p value? Is because h one is my not equal to. So we can consider this is. Say I consider as a z, fine. Z is greater than or equal to t value. What is the value of that t? Because x bar is zero, mu is zero. So what is that? This is mod of z is greater than or equal to zero. So what? What is the meaning of that? If you consider this as a normal distribution, so greater than zero and mod of them is less than zero. So complete answer is my one is the required answer of this problem. So that is a very simple again. You must know about the sampling. Testing statistics of this. I hope you can like my video uh, uh, after watching this or in between them.
if x is observed sample of size this then which of the following is the most powerful test so i can start with the h of this divided by it must be greater than k so what is the size of sample size is 1 so likelihood function is nothing but my x size i is varies from 1 to 1 this is nothing but f of x so what is the h1 h1 is my here so i can return in terms of the x it is half e raised to power this divided by h0 because this part is a constant so there is no worry to return again and again this is greater than k so you can see this is a constant so i can multiply this is called as another constant so i can return this number as x square by 2 minus of mod x is greater than another constant c or called as a k1 because i final need a c so i can take as a lcm of this i can take the logarithm which is again another constant called as a c2 i can multiply by 2 here then in this numerator part we can see the option firstly option is written the power of this so i can plus 1 Plus one on the both side. What is the left hand side? This is mod x minus one whole square is greater than c plus one. I call as a c. What is the meaning of that? This must be root of c again. I call as another constant c. So this is the critical reason of here for the sum positive number c. It is a minus. It is a less than. Greater. It is a less than of this. So again, this option is cancelled. Correct option is only my c. So this is the critical reason basically. this is the critical reason so always remember whenever there is a question of the most powerful test you can start with the l of h0 divided by l of h0 okay look at this one uh, random sample of size 10 is from the normal distribution gives the confidence interval as here fine this is the mean mean is uh, h0 is 20.5 confidence interval is my What is the interval is twenty point four nine and twenty three point five one. This is my rejection portion. Now you can see which of the following can be rejected of this. What is my H naught? H naught is twenty point five and which lies here in between them. Fine. So in this case, we all know this is a accepted. So what is the meaning of that? It is ninety eight percent test confidence. It means. this value is accepted at 2 percentage level of significance so it can be rejected at 2 percentage that's option is cancel out now once you can see it's uh, accepted or rejected at some level what is the meaning of the other one now look at this is a generalized approach how you can think about that you can see if i call this is my 2 percentage the value is my accepted so this portion is my rejected this portion is my accepted so when it will be accepted if it lies anywhere at here fine now can't be rejected at 5 percentage firstly you can draw the 5 percentage this is a probability 0 this is 0.02 so 0.05 is lies here this is my 5 percentage now any value which are left of this is accepted for at the 2 percentage but what is the rejection portion this is my this is my rejection portion for the 5 percentage level so if the value lies here what is the meaning of that it is rejected at 5 percentage but he said can't be rejected it is only possible if value is always lies here but it may happen that the value lies at this so this option is also cancel out now look at the third case again you have the values is a 2 percentage accepted values lies somewhere here this is my rejection portion then 10 percentage you can define this is my 10 percentage so value may lie here value may lie here if value lie here we can reject it if value here we can accept it so it can be rejected the word is can be yes you can be rejected if the value lies at here so yes this is the correct option can't be rejected at any level of significance that's strong because if value lies here then it must be rejected at 10% so the right answer is my c if you want to look at the detail explanation of this you can simply see my uh, lecture theory lecture of the confidence interval you can see the concept of the confidence interval and example that's why i'm asking you you can simply 
firstly look at this theory lecture deeply so that you can understand all these concepts easily. I have described the most powerful test and the UMP test. You can see the most powerful test lecture here as I mentioned ULH like of such questions. We already described in the theory lecture. Okay, look at this one. Now in this case you can see the critical reason is not given to you. What is that? Alpha, the level of significance is given to you here. What is given to you? This is X belongs to the W of H0. But what is the critical reason? It is not given. We can start with this H1 over H0 greater than K. What is that H? There is nothing sample is there. So this is the 3X square over H1. H1 is my F1. This is F1. F H0 is my 2X. So what is that? X will be cancelled. So 3 by 2 is a constant. So X is my greater than K. So what is the meaning of that? 0.1. This is the probability of X greater than K condition H0. H0 is my F0. That is my here. So what is that? This is K to 1 of 2X DX. Fine. So can you integrate them? It is 1 minus K square of 0.19. K square is 0.81 k is my 0.9 fine so the critical reason is my 0.9 now your target is to find the power so what is the power is again a very simple you have to integrate over 0.92 over the h1 what is the h1 is here so upper limit is 1 so 0.12 this value is my 3x square what is the integration of the 3x square is x cube so what is that? It's a 1 minus 0.729. So what is the answer of this? 0.271 is the right answer. This problem. So you because the critical reason is not given, you have to firstly find it and then you can simply use the power, oh sorry, size and the power. Okay, look at the binomial distribution. So X follows my binomial distribution with the parameter 3 and P. H0 is given to be here. Now you can see the critic test is given to you. W is given to you as here. And we always need a rejection. So this is a rejected H0. What is a type 1? Alpha you want to need. Probability X greater than 2 under the H0. H0 is my P is equal to 2 over 3. So it's a greater than 3 uh, up to the 3. So I can return as X is equal to 2 and X is equal to 3. So what is that? N is my 3. 3 C 2 P square Q of 1 plus 3 C 3 P of 3 Q of 0. So it is my 3 P square Q plus of P Q. This is the value of X greater than 2 at any alpha. Then type 1 that is a P is equal to this. So what is the value of the alpha when you take P as 2 by 3. So it is 3 4 over 9 Q is 1 by 3. So it is 8 over 27. So you can see 27 is the LCM, 12 plus 820 by 27. So type 1, this option cancel, this option cancel. Then your target is to type 2, so we can define the power. Fine, power is x greater than 2 when h1 is 2. So what is the type 2? What is the type 2? 1 minus, what is the beta is 1 minus of this. So what is the 1 minus? This is the same answer. Fine, because we already computed this as here. So, but under the H1, H1 is 1 over 3. So, I can substitute P as 1 over 3. Q is my 2 over 3. P is 1 over 3, 27. So, what is the answer of this? It's a 27 is LCM, 6 plus 1, 7 over 27. So, what is that? 20 over 27 is the right answer of this problem. You always try to find the equation in the journal form and then you can substitute the value of the parameter under the H0 and H1. Remember in this case you can see the critical reason is already given to you. So there is no need to find the L of H1 over L of H0 because reason is already given to you. Okay again you can see in this case critical reason is given to you. You have to find the value of alpha. So what is that? Alpha is greater than of greater than or equal to 4.5 under the H0. First of all, you can see what is the X? What is that? This is nothing but exponential distribution with the parameter here. 
once it's exponential distribution then we all knows probability of x greater than equal to a is nothing but a into parameter parameter is this one and if you find the cdf of the exponential distribution it will be 1 minus a or x if you want to find up to the point x x into parameter parameter is 1 over lambda now you can see what is that i can use this property so what is that this is nothing but e raised to power minus 4.5 into parameter is lambda fine this is the probability of this case then your target is to find the value of alpha under the h naught what is h naught 3 so i can substitute lambda is my 3 it is e of here what is the power i can firstly find this uh, power that is a power is under the h1 fine this is my power 4.5 under the h1 so since i already computed this as of here so what is the h1 is 5 so if i substitute lambda is 5 it is my 0 0.9 now you can uh, find this value e of 1 point e of minus 1.5 so if you use the calculator you will or you can simply take 2.17 of approximate value you can find it that's again it's a 2231 so 2231 this value cancel so only the y answer so if you calculate this it is 0 0.4066 so d is my correct option okay again you can see the critical reason is given to you and your type 1 so firstly i can find the value probability of this case this or probability of greater than equal to b and since we need the value of the type 1 only that is under the h naught h naught is my here what is that which is that this is i can return as q raised to power k of p fine so how i can return this value is my 0 to a of q raised to power k of p plus this is from equality b to infinity because k has infinite value q raised to power k of p so firstly i can return like here you can see p is a constant p can be outside fine which distribution will be here when you look about here what is the sum of this this is a gp series so what is the infinite sum of the gp series first term 1 minus r what is the first term q raised to power b over 1 minus q this is the first part now look at that what is that this is a sum of the finite term what is the sum of the finite term is 1 minus r of n 1 minus r so first term again p is my outside fine so what is the answer of this so i can return this is p a so a q raised to power 0 is 1 1 minus ratio what is the number of the terms it start from the 0 and a the terms are my a plus 1 divided by 1 minus r so 1 minus q is nothing but the p because h0 is my because p is my half so q is also half so this value will be cancelled out so it is half of b so again p is half q is half so this value is also cancelled so what is the answer of this 1 minus 2 of minus a minus 1 plus 2 of minus b so 1 2 raised power b plus this cancel 2 raised power b cancel this option cancel c is my right answer of this problem fine that's a very simple uh, question about otherwise you may think about that this is my geometric distribution fine if you look about that this is nothing but the geometric distribution okay look at this another one probability density function test the null hypothesis reject again the critical reason is given to you fine and size is one only so there is no need to write the likelihood function then the power of the test what is the power is power is probability x is greater than or equal to rejection provided h1 is my true okay so what is h1 is h1 is my theta is 3 so i can because this is a continuous from half upper limit is 1 what is h1 theta is 3 so i can substitute here it is 3 x square fine so what is the answer of this is x cube half to 1 so what is the answer of this you can see how many second you needed to solve this problem 
you can write up to the decimal places you can get your answer so you can see how many times you need it remember that if the critical reason is not given to you then you have to find by using the most powerful test if it is already given to you you can start from as such okay now again look at this another one what is that this is the discrete distribution fine so remember a simple tips for you whenever there is a discrete distribution again is the critical reason is given to you no it is not given to you so then you can start with the l of h1 l of h0 what is h1 is f1 divided by h0 is f0 fine so i can define this as f1 divided by f0 so if i divide them what will happen if you divide them it will be uh, 0.05 divided by 0.10 it is 0.5 fine is it true then 0.6 0.8 0.9 1.2 so you can see that this is my follow the same pattern that is a increasing sequence fine whenever there is a increasing then your critical reason will be x is greater than of c fine if it is a decreasing then it will be less than of c fine now what is the value of the c how you can find that its alpha is given to you alpha what is the alpha is x greater than c provided f not is to h not that is here so you can see alpha is my point 1 so can you find the value of c so that the sum will be point 1 look at that how you can do because it's a increasing sequence we can define the critical reason if it is increasing that's a very simple the first case you can consider all values fine and calculate the alpha calculate the alpha by using the f node what is the f node is sum of them is a 1 which is not equal to point 1 so this case is not possible look at the second case i can skip the first part and then start with the other one 2 3 4 5 calculate the value of the alpha what is the value of the alpha corresponding 2 3 4 5 it is point 9 which is again not equal to point 1 so again i can skip the first part then the next value will be 3 4 5 what is the value of the alpha corresponding to this 3 4 5 under the h node is point 8 which is again not equal to point 1 so again this value will be cancel out next value will be 4 5 uh, because i have to return here otherwise you can simply see from the table what is the value of the alpha from the 4 and 5 it is point 7 again not equal to point 1 the last value you can consider as a single single and 5 the value of the alpha is 0.6 which is again not equal to 0.1 it means you are unable to find the critical reason fine then if you are unable to find the critical reason then the power will be always f1 by f0 provided this value is my maximum what is f1 over f0 is here which one is the maximum 1.2 so this value will be 1.2 what is the value of the alpha that is a type 1 is 0.1 so what is that it is my 0.12 is the right this formula is applicable only if you are unable to find the any of the critical reason then you can simply find out this look at one more example again you can see this is a discrete case fine so we can define the l of h1 because again critical reason is not given to you what is h1 is a p1 h0 p0 fine so we can define the p1 over p0 this is p1 if you divide them what will happen it's a 0.7 something what is that it will be my 2 it is my 4 it is my 5 again you can see it is my increasing fine so your critical reason will be x greater than c we can define these values firstly i can take all those values can you get the value of the alpha as 0.05 no because if you add uh, what is the f p0 you can see if you add them it is a 1 which is not as 0.05 then you can look about the 8 9 10 10 what is the value of the 8 9 10 corresponding to this it is my it is my 0.1 which is not equal to this what is the next one is if i consider 9 and 10 the 
the value of the alpha corresponding to this is 0.05 and this is the requirement so what is the critical reason critical reason is 9 and 10 then you can find the power what is the power x belongs to the w over the h1 h1 is p1 look at in this table the value of the 9 and 10 what is the sum of this 0 0.16 0 0.05 so the answer is 0 0.21 is the right answer of the problem if if you are unable to find the value of the w again in this case then you can apply this again alpha times maximum value alpha 1 f1 over f0 but in this case you have find the value of alpha corresponding to the 4 and 5 corresponding to 9 and 10 so the critical reason will be 0.2 of critical reason will be 9 and 10 so the power of the test will be my here okay again you can see this is a discrete problem fine so what is the h0 is h this is my h f and g sorry this is my h is, is this is my f and this is g fine then so firstly critical reason is given no so you can find the value of g divided by f fine so firstly i can define the f and g what is the f corresponding to 1 2 3 4 5 6 the value is 1 over 6 1 over 6 here what is the g when it is 1 it is 1 over 12 it is 1 over 2 1 over 9 1 over 9 1 over 9 then what is the l of h1 l of h naught h1 is g divided by f so g divided by f if you take the ratio it will be half it will be half it will be 3 it will be 2 by 3 it will be 2 by 3 it is 2 by 3 now you can see it is not an increasing not an decreasing so it means your critical reason is not be here it is not be here fine it is another category so what will happen if the sequence is either not increasing neither the increasing nor decreasing then you can firstly write in the increasing decreasing so it is a 1 over 2 then it is my 2 over 3 then it is my 3 fine this is my sequence in the arranging order fine with you now very simple target for you firstly what you can do is firstly you can define the critical reason take think any value think any value which is less than of the 1 by 2 so say 0 how many values which are greater than of the 0 you can think any value which is less than of half fine and think any how many values which are greater than of uh, 0 all values so the corresponding numbers are my own fine now you can check about the alpha is it 1 by 6 you can see the sum of uh, under the rejected h0 h0 is my here you can see the sum is 1 which is not 1 by 6 then we can take about the second case think any number in between them 0 0.5 0 0.66 so think about 0 0.6 any number in between them how many numbers which are greater than of the 0 0.6 here 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 and here the corresponding numbers are 3 4 5 6 the corresponding value of the alpha is 4 by 6 which is again not equal to 1 by 6 then think any number in between them 0.6 to 3 i can take as a 2 how many numbers which are greater than of 2 only one number 3 the corresponding number is 3 what is the alpha corresponding to them alpha is 1 by 6 and yes we need the alpha so what is the critical reason critical reason is my 3 is the right answer of this problem fine that's a very simple you, again the rule is similar if it either neither the increasing nor the decreasing you have to arrange them and then you can you have to write the in the interval form pick any number which is less than of the 1.1 by 2 and look about the values in the g uh, l of h1 by l of h0 ha, look about the values of the x which are greater than of this similarly which are here but the sum is not this so the right answer of this is my c is my correct answer okay uh, this is the wilkerson sign test the sample size is my 4 fine very simple there is no worry about that 
look at that your target is to find here whatever the given to forget about that it means less than equal to 5 it means either the 0 either the 1 either the 2 3 or 4 or 5 fine this is the case then your target is to find the partitions you have to count the partitions only so look at that there are the four numbers 1 2 3 and 4 look at the partition of 0 remember non repeating numbers non repeating partition you have to find them so 0 0 is nothing be there so i can simply say 0 0 0 okay or you can see uh, there is non repeating so 0 has no partition so i can simply take it as a 0 how you can return as a 1 it is only 1 fine how you can return 2 it is written only as a 2 how you can return as a 3 I can return 3 as 3 or partition of the 3 is 1 plus 2. There is a non-repeating. What is the partition of the 4? 1 is 4. Second is 1 plus 3. There is a non-repeating. 2 plus 2. There is a repetition. So we can skip that. What is the partition of the 5? 1 is the 5. Second is 1 plus 4. Fine. And second is 2 plus 3. But you can see 5 is not the part of the sample. So this is cancel fine now you can see how many partitions are there 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 so the right answer of this is 9 divided by 2 raised to power n n is 4 so it is 32 into over 16 so the right answer of this problem is 8 so simple concept is you have to find the non repeating partitions you can simply write t positive is here 0 has no partition like a 0 1 1 has single partition among the sample 2 has single sample and then so on so total 9 partitions are there and then you can add i hope you can put a like on my video okay again the critical reason is given to you x is greater than of this is critical reason already given to you that is my w then you have to find the size so alpha what is the definition of the alpha x belongs to the critical region provided h0 is my true so do you remember which distribution is here so x follows my exponential distribution and i already told you the simplest shortcut tips is whenever there is a distribution of the exponential it is always be e raised to power here and exponential parameter exponential parameter is theta or if you write in terms of the cdf then it will be written as 1 minus x into parameter now here you can see it is a greater than so it is my of this form so e raised to power a is my log of e 20 theta what is the parameter is and under the h naught h naught is my 1 into 1 so what is that e raised to power minus log of e 20 what is that it is 1 over 20 so what is the size of this is 0 0.05 is the right answer of this problem how many seconds you need to solve the problem or uh, less than of the 15 second okay look at this one uh, x follows this random sample from the uniform distribution over this x follows the uniform distribution fine so if it follow the uniform distribution we all knows how you can find the pdf 1 over upper minus lower we all knows how you can find the cdf of this x minus lower divided by upper minus of this that's the simplest shortcut tips for you always is the critical reason given yes it is given then alpha and beta are the size and alpha that's a simple you have to find x greater than of the 3.5 provided h naught is my 2 fine what is my h naught h naught is my 2 so look at that i can return this number as cdf of 3.5 fine now i can substitute the value here and what is the h naught h naught is my theta is 2 i can substitute here cdf is this so 3.5 theta is my 2 divided by 4 minus 2 fine so what is that is a 1.5 or you can take the lcm it is 
फोर माइनस थ्री पॉइंट फाइव ओवर टू दैट इज जीरो पॉइंट फाइव ओवर टू सेकेंड इज दे आर टॉकिंग अबाउट द पावर वट इज माई पावर इज अगेन इट्स अ क्रिटिकल रीजन एक्स इज ग्रेटर दैन ऑफ द थ्री पॉइंट फाइव प्रोवाइडेड एच वन सो अगेन आई कैन रिटर्न एज अ सी डी एफ सेम एक्सप्रेशन द सी डी एफ अंडर द एच वन एच वन इज माई थ्री थीटा इज थ्री सो आई कैन सब्सटीट्यूट हेयर थ्री पॉइंट फाइव माइनस थ्री नाइन माइनस थ्री सिक्स सो इट इज नाइन माइनस थ्री पॉइंट फाइव ओवर सिक्स सो इट्स अ फाइव पॉइंट फाइव ओवर सिक्स देन द वैल्यू ऑफ द एल्फा प्लस बीटा आई कैन टेक एज अ सिक्स इज एल्शियम वन पॉइंट फाइव फाइव पॉइंट फाइव ओवर सिक्स सो इट इज अ सेवन ओवर सिक्स यू कैन राउंड ऑफ द टू डेसिमल प्लेसिस यू विल गेट द राइट आंसर एज हियर always remember try to identify the distribution write in terms of the pdf and the cdf you will get the right answer fraction of second okay look at this one xi is are my random sample of this which is a double exponential distribution fine which is a double exponential or called as simply say laplace distribution h0 is given okay critical reason is also given but we we have a critical reason corresponding to this y i i very strong here so it means we need the distribution of y i firstly fine look at what is the meaning of that this is nothing but my bernoulli fine and what is the sum of the bernoulli what is the meaning of that it follows binomial distribution because sum of the binomial bernoulli is a binomial n is my 5 probability is probability is not given so i consider as a p what is my p p is the probability of x i greater than 0 now since it has of this so i can substitute this value 0 to infinity probability density function is half under half of e of absolute value x minus theta fine then your target is to find the size what is my size probability of if i consider this is my h fine so i my target is to find h is less than equal to 2 under the h not i consider as a i have a h already fine so this is my a a follows the binomial distribution under the h not what is h not is theta is 0 so under the h not what is this integration half e raised to power minus x because x is a positive so theta is a h x is also here so what is the integration of this it is 0 plus 1 it is half so it's binomial now you can see less than 2 how you can write that it's a n c 0 p is my this less than equal to 2 fine so p raised to power 0 q raised to power 5 plus n c 1 p raised to power 1 q raised to power 4 plus 5 c 2 p raised to power 2 q raised to power 3 now since p is my half q is also half so what you can do this is nothing but p raised to power 5 p raised to power 5 p raised to power 5 is a common what is 5 c 0 is 1 5 what is that it's a 10 so what is that is a 16 p is my 1 by 2 raised to power 5 is a 32 the right answer is my 1 by 2 0.5 is the right Okay, look at this another one. X i's are my size six follows the Bernoulli distribution. Then the critical reason is given to be here. So firstly, what is the by y follows? Y follows as a binomial distribution. N is my six. What is the probability? Is probability is my theta. Fine. Then the sample observation is come to be four. The sample observation is nothing but my test. statistics well the meaning of this is test statistics well then its sample size is come to be 4 then the p value is nothing but probability of y is greater than equal to 4 that is your target find y follows this under the h not find test statistics is always computed under the h not what is h not is half so it means this is my binomial distribution with of half So now you can see n is my six, six c four, 
p raised power 4 q2 6 c5 p raised power 5 q1 6 c6 p raised power 6 q raised power 0 p is my half so q is also half so once p and q are same so you can see p raised power 6 is a common 6 c4 what is the 6 c4 is is a 15 6 c5 is 6 6 c6 6 is my 1 so what is that it's a 22 p raised power 6 p is my here 1 by 2 raised power 6 so 22 divided by 64 it is 11 over 30 2 is the right answer of the problem a very simple approach you must understand that how you can open this bracket under the h node and the h1 fine the p value is called as the size of the test if they are talking about the power of the test then how you can solve this again you have to find this value over the h1 what is the h1 is theta is not specified given to you so that's why they are not asking you as the power of the test okay x size are again the Bernoulli distribution parameter theta again you can see if I consider this is my summation of here then clearly says this follows my binomial distribution with the parameter 4 probability is theta critical reason is here alpha type 1 gamma is the power of the test so what is the critical reason y greater than 2 over this h not fine so 4 so i can see 4 c 3 because it's a strictly greater than 2 probability p raised to power 3 q raised to power 1 4 c 4 p raised to power 4 q raised to power 0 p is my theta under this h node is 1 by 4 so q will be my 3 by 4 so i can substitute 4 c 4 is my 4 p is my 1 by 4 so it is 1 by 4 cube 3 by 4 plus 4 c is my 1 1 over 4 is power 4 of 0 so 4 is power 4 is LCM so 12 plus 13 so it is 13 over 16 into 16 this is my alpha now you have to find the gamma gamma is my power so what is the power is probability y is greater than 2 over the h1 but h1 is not given to you fine exact value is not given but here you can see gamma at the point half and half is greater than this so this value is my half so p is my half q is also half so i can again already i solve this value fine so i can substitute this value for the h1 p is half q is half so this is my 1 by 2 raised to power 4 is common it is my 4 c 4 is 4 it is 1 so it is 5 over 16 now I can substitute here 116 cancel 13 over 16 plus 7 into this 35 over 16 so it is 48 over 16 so the right answer of this problem is my 3. Try to always write the expression in the journal form so that whenever they are asking you find the power you can simply use this expression by using the value of p and q as here. So that's, that will take a lot of time, that will save you a lot of time. Okay, look at this another one, again the 2022. What is that sample is given to you xn, x i follows the normal distribution with this and 2 raised power 2 is a 4. Null hypothesis is given, h1 is also given, is rejected h0 if sample mean, what is the critical reason is given to you? when the sample mean is large how much large it is not given so i consider this is my c fine then the smallest value of the alpha a smallest value of the n the type 1 error type 1 error is alpha when this over the h naught is given to you as a 0 0.05 and the type 2 error is at most type 2 error is the this is my type 2 error this is my of this under the h1 because this is the power type 2 error is 1 minus beta 1 minus of this oh, sorry i can return as 1 minus this at most is sorry at most it's a less than or equal to 0 0.01 fine 
again a very very simple you all knows what is the distribution follows this is mu sigma square by n now in this case it is given to you so what is my x bar it follows mu square is 4 by n now i can convert this value firstly of this so i can return this as probability z greater than under the h node what is h node is 10 when it's a 10 so it's a c minus 10 divided by 2 over root n this is 0.05 now look at that it's a 0.95 can you write this in in terms of the cdf so what is that it's a cdf of this number fine i have to return 1 minus so it is 0.95 so what is the meaning of that if i return this c minus 10 divided by 2 of root n it is nothing but 1.645 fine now look at that i need a 0.99 so can you convert this number as a 0.99 you can easily convert this number as so probability again i can return as a z is a c minus under the h1 what is h1 is is a 12 so this is my 12 divided by 2 by root n this is greater than or equal to 0.99 fine so i have to return the cdf form so this is not a cdf so i have to return this as phi of this number is c minus 12 which is a uh, less than of point again it will be here so because this is inequality so you can simply say this number c minus 12 divided by 2 of root n so can you relate with this point uh, sorry 0.2 uh, 2.33 you can easily relate them this is nothing but my minus of 2.33 why because we all knows the area under this curve of alpha area under this curve of minus alpha is the same so this is the now you have the two equations fine you can easily solve them you, you can so this is sorry this is at most so this must be less than of this now you can divide them Uh, i can clear this screen for you fine now if you divide them what will happen root n will be cancel out c minus 10 over c minus 12 is less than or equal to minus 1.64 or uh, okay that's a simple i can divide this by this fine so that it will be easier for you so you can see c minus 12 over c minus 10 is here but i need a n we, we don't need a c uh, you can solve this one instead of this i can see you can see c root n by 2 minus of 10 by 2 of root n this value is my here so i you can see i can substitute this value from here fine so it is 1.645 minus 5 root n Minus six of root n because I have to multiply this. It must be less than of minus two point three. Now, now you can see this will be minus eleven root n is less than of minus two point three three, and here. Now from this you can see minus will be cancelled out. It is a greater than of something. You can find the value of the n. It comes to be fifteen point eight. So what is the smallest value of the n? Is come to be six. fine so that's a that's a take little bit calculation about that's true okay look at this another one what is given to you sample size is here sample mean x bar is given to you 5 point here phi denoted this this ump again you can see it's a ump test given to you the p value that's a alpha size of the test h node is given what is the probability of sample mean sample mean is given to you but what is the critical reason critical reason is not given to you okay fine because h1 is my not equal to fine so it means either the less than or the greater than is my 2t fine so you can define the sample mean is not equal to 5.608 under the h not because size 1 this is my type 1 error now how you can solve that 
because it's not equal to so i can return as a twice of x bar is greater than of 5.608 under the h not what is the h not is 5.02 what is the sample mean we all know this follows mean variance by n so variance is 9 so what is my x bar is uh, under the h not is mean is 5.02 sigma 9 n is my 100 fine now you can substitute this value probability of z is greater than 5.608 minus 5.02 divided by root of this so 3 by 10 so what is that it's a twice probability of z is greater than of what is that it's a 1.96 so any value given to you 1.9 but it's a cdf you have to write in terms of cdf fine now phi of one point is a point 0.975 so what is that is a what is that this is 0 0.025 into 2 is my 0 0.05 is the answer of this problem always I try to identify the distribution of this x because this x bar so x bar has the distribution under the h naught if they are talking about the h1 then instead of this you have to return as a h1 value okay look at this another one what is given to you uh, is uh, two values are given h naught critical reason is already given to you okay what is given to you x i follows the normal distribution what is thus here sum of the normal distribution is also normal the mean will be sum of this and the variance will be because uh, independent random is independent 1 1 1 1 is a n now what is the size of alpha size is given to you as 0 0.05 so that means probability of sum greater than c under the h node is my 0 0.025 so I can return this number as I can convert into the Z which is C under the H node. H node is mu 0. So this value is 0 divided by root N. It is 0 0.025. Fine. So uh, I, I forget to write the values as here. Just like the previous values are given to you. You can see this value is 0 0.025 which is the same of this. So it means this C by root 17 c by root n is nothing but 1.96 this is the first equation then similarly you can think about the power of the test what is the power of the test is probability summation of x greater than c under the h1 so what is the h1 h1 is half mean is mean is n by 2 point mean is my n by 2 so you can see it's a c divided by root of n so this value when you taken as a z under the h node is given as 0 0.7054 again the value is not given so again this value is similar it is already given to you in the examination in in front of the paper so this value is c minus half divided by root n is this value corresponding this is my 1.86 then your target is to find the n so you can see I can simply I can use the c by root n is 1.96 minus half of root n is 1.86 so what is that I can subtract them it's a 0 0.1 is 0 0.5 by root n so what is the root n is 5 so what is the value of the n is 25 is the answer so in this question it is not mentioned these such values are there but if you look about your question paper in, in the examination of the gate 2015 the values are written in the first page of your paper so this value is given as a 1.86 then you can simplify this expression okay so look at this another one what is given to you x i follows the normal distribution with here so look at this oh, I uh, just wait I think I forget this because this is the n, n mu so when the c it's a n by 2 oh uh, it's, a, it's a it's a mistake it's a mistake so this is nothing but i if i convert into the z it's a c minus under the h1 h1 is my mu is half so this value will be n by 2 
oh that's fine that is fine this value is 0 0.7054 now if you again look at the values if you again look at the values then this value is given to you as 0 0.54 i just check this value on the normal distribution table this values come to be here then again the rule are similar you can find these values again uh, your c by root n is 1.96 this value i can written as root n by 2 is minus 0 0.5 4. So you can see if you add them, it will be 2.5 is root n by 2. Is it 2.5? Yes. So it will be 5. So what is that? Root n is my 5. Again, n will be 25. So, but but the concept in uh, I mentioned in the previous is wrong because I forget the value of the n. So the right answer is my here. Okay. Again x size i varies from 1 to n follow the normal we need the value of this fine if i consider this as a, a my target is to find the distribution of a i always tell you in my previous videos whenever there is a term of the x i square it always follows the chi square but you have to make them as a chi square so how you make them you all knows this value will follow the chi square distribution what is the mu zero sigma is sigma so i can return this as xi minus zero is zero divided by sigma this value is follows my chi square distribution of degree one but i need as a summation so summation of xi square divided by sigma square will follow the chi square distribution over i is equal to one to nine it's a nine fine so now, so alpha is given to you. That means this value xi square is less than c under the h naught is given to you. So what you can do, I can return this as a chi square. If I divide, divide it both side by sigma square, fine. So this is my chi square of n. This is under the h naught. Uh, h naught is my sigma square is 2. So it is my c over 2 this value is come to be here. Now, if you again look at the uh, question paper of 2017, the first phase, this value is given to be here. So that means C over 2 is given to you as 4.17. So what is the value of the C? It is 8.34. Fine. Now your target is to find the power of the test. So what is the power? Power is probability of critical reason under the h1 again i have to return this as a chi square of 9 if i divide it by sigma square so under the h1 what is the sigma square 1 it is less than c c is my 8.34 and this value is given to you as a 1 by 2 that is a 0 0.5 this value is given as a 0 0.5 in the question paper itself so this value is my is the right answer of this problem Okay, look at this one, a one-way fix analysis. What is the meaning of that? It's a one-way ANOVA. Fine. So whenever there is a one-way ANOVA, you have to write this term. Sum of the square, mean sum of the square, F ratio. This is the group, this is the error, and this is the total. Fine. So your target is to find the value of the F. That means your target is to find the value of this. Okay, look at that. Firstly, we have to find the degree of freedom. How many total elements are there? Can you look for that? How many total elements is given to you in this question? So you can see, firstly, H0. How many unknown parameters? Look at that. From here, these are the total 12 pairs. So the degree of freedom is my 12 minus 1, 11. Fine. How many unknown parameters? Sigma is are there. Tau 1, tau 2 and here. Now you can see these values are my unknowns. Fine. So there are the three pairs. So degree of freedom is my two. It is my nine. Fine. So what is the F ratio? F ratio is always from the group with respect to the error. Two comma nine is my error. And the P value. P value is my always be called as the type one error. That is the rejection portion. So when it will be the rejected? You can see this is my rejection portion when this value is this is value of the 2 comma 9 of the critical value 
if this value must be greater than of this observed value this value is my 104.45 so this value must be greater than of this value then only you can find the p value it's a simple any of the testing of hypothesis concept now it's a multiple linear regression models the sum of the squares and again here again it's a one way anova we can start with this sum of the square mss f ratio group error total firstly let me check how you can find your target is to find the r adjusted square value so you know what is the r adjusted square value this is 1 minus degree of freedom of the total divided by degree of freedom of the error minus what is that it is a sum of the squares of group divided by sum of the squares of the total find this or i can return this number as here this is r square what is the r square is this is my r square okay otherwise you can simply this is the value of the r now you have to find this value firstly you have to check how many values are there you can see there are total 123 elements so what is the degree of freedom total is 122 so i can substitute here as well degree of group this value this is the uh, sorry this is the error so what is the group how many unknowns are there look at the betas are unknown how many betas are there 22 and 1 23 so degree of freedom is my 22 so this degree of freedom is my 100 so degree of freedom of this is my this value fine now what is the ss you have to find this value ss of group this value divided by here sum of the square due to the regression this value is my 338.92 total sum of the square is my 522.30 so now you can substitute this value 338.92 522.30 now after the calculation finally you have to multiply this whatever the answer you can got you can multiply by 100 you can do your calculation by on you can get as 17.17 is the right answer of this problem but you just remember this formula in case of the testing of hypothesis again a multiple linear regression your target is to find the one way anova again degree of freedom sum of the square mss f ratio so that's a group error and total fine then your value of the test statistics means your target is to find this value very simple how many unknown parameters firstly there are 52 observations degree of freedom is my 51 how many unknown parameters there are the four unknown parameters degree of freedom is 3 fine so error degree of freedom is 48 sum of the squares of the regression that is group value is 18.6 total sum of the square is 79.23 can you find this value you can this minus this so this number will be 60.63 finally you can find this value that is a 18.60 divided by 3 and 60.63 divided by 48 so if i consider this as a a this as a b so the answer of this is my a divided by b so if you take this what is whatever the a whatever the b if you divide them you will get answer as 4.91 is the right answer if you want to write in the three decimal places instead of this it will be 4.9089 is your right answer of the problem so that's a simple way you can solve this problem okay look at this another one uh, cdf is given to you alpha and beta critical reason is already given fine so that's a very simple you have to find the critical reason this provided h not beta is my power what is my beta is critical reason under this h1 fine so what is that i can return this as a cdf cdf of 0.5 so 0.5 lies in here 
so i can return this is 1 minus 0.5 theta value under the h node h node is my 1 so this is my 0.5 same this is my cdf again 0.5 lies in here so i can substitute this under the h1 the value of theta is my 2 so what is that this is 1 minus 0.5 1 by 4 it is 3 by 4 this is 1 by 2 so alpha plus beta what is alpha plus beta so 1 over 2 3 over 4 so answer is 5 over 4 so you can write up to the two decimal places 1.25 is the right answer of the problem okay look at this another one so again this is the testing of hypothesis which is as a ks test very simple so if d capital d what is that you all know which is nothing but my maximum or the supremum of fn minus f0 what is fn is fn is your empirical distribution fine f0 is the distribution corresponding to the h0 what is the empirical distribution is empirical distribution is k over n what is the k k is my number of this size so if I consider k is my, what is the sample size is 1, 2, 3, 4. What is the n? What is the sample size is 1, 2, 3, 4. n is my 4. So firstly, it's a cumulative, empirical cumulative distribution function. So it's a, when k is 1, it's a point, what is the f n? 0.25. k is equal to 2, 1 by 2, 0 0.50. k is equal to 3, 0.75 k is equal to 4 1 what is the f node f node is come from the h node what is the h node is f0 that is my here so firstly you have to write in this ascending order that is a 0 0.12 0 0.13 0 0.7 0 0.51 0 0.78 so first number is 0 0.12 where is the 0 0.12 lies here so this number is 0 0.12 0 0.13 again lies here 0 0.51 again lies here and 0 0.78 again lies here fine then you can see about here find the capital D find the difference 0 0.13 find the difference 0 0.37 find the difference 0 0.24 find of this so what is the value of the D what is the value of the D that is a maximum so maximum is my here so capital D is my point three seven so this value is my point three seven what is the psi psi is one if h0 is accepted how you can accept it or reject it the things you can draw this graph fine what is this value is point six six nine this portion is rejected this portion is accepted so where the d value lies point three lies here it means it is accepted so if h0 is accepted the value of the psi is my 1 so psi is my 1 so the answer of this is 1.37 is your right answer of the problem fine so that's a simple way you can solve this problem okay now look at this problem this is a contingency table now it's a 2 cross 2 fine and 2.5% level of significance the critical reason is my here so it means the value calculated value of this must be greater than of 5 then only you can reject it that fine how you can find this value if you remember that there is a formula of e minus o whole square divided by e but that will take a lot of the calculation I will tell you the simplest shortcut tricks whenever you have the two information a b c and d fine then you can find the total this is my n a plus b c plus d column wise column wise then you can find the chi square value directly from here n determinant of this a d minus b c whole square divided by the total of this a plus b c plus d a plus c and b plus d fine now look at that if i make them total as a 1 1 plus d 2 d 
what will be the total is 2 plus d so i can substitute n is my 2 plus d what is the determinant of this this minus this d square over addition of this this 2 into d it must be greater than of 5 5 so now you can see 5 will be cancelled out so what will happen is 2 plus d divided by 2, 2 I can written as in that, uh, you know, I can written here. So it is d times of this divided by, I can written as greater than of the 10 of 1 plus d. Now you can think from the option, d is greater than 1, I can take as a 2. Is it satisfied? 2 into 4 divided by 3, it is not greater than 10, option cancel. Greater than 3, say 4. If I take it as a 4, it will be 4 into 6 divided by 5. Again, it is not greater than of the 10. Cancel. Greater than 5. So, say any number is 6. If it is a 6, then it is a 6 into 7. Sorry, 6 into 8 over 7, which is not greater than of the 10. So, the right answer is my here. You can see, if I take D as my 10, so what will happen is 10 into 12 divided by 11 and you can see that which is greater than of the 10 it's a 120 is greater than of the 1 1 so the right option is my d is the correct answer okay look at this another one it's a man whitney u test and you have to find the value of the u a very simple question is minimum of the ux and uy what is the ux ux is nothing but tx minus number of the observation in the first sample u y is t of y and 2 and 2 plus 1 over 2 where t x and t y is the sum of the ranks in x and y fine so if i consider this is my x this is my y so firstly your target is to make them as a ranking look at the smallest element in this all elements 13 1 you can rank them as a 1 the next smallest element is 14 it appears two times fine it up no sorry three times so already one position is assigned so it has two three and four they are the three elements so two three and four take the average of this so what is the average of this is three so you can assign this number as three this number as a three this number as a three look at the next smallest element is 15 is not there 16 one times 16 two times there are the two times how many elements you have observed one two three four so this number are five and six they are the two numbers take the average so this is my 5.5 this is also 5.5 next number is 17 one time 17 two times there are the two times are there fine then how many observation you have take six observation seven and eight take the average of this 7.5 7.5 next number is 18 you have observed three times fine so you have uh, how many observation you put up 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 so then 9 10 11 because 18 appears three times 1 2 3 what is the average is 10 so you can return each number as a 10 the last number is 20 appears three times so you put up 11 numbers so it's a 12 13 14 divided by 3 so it's a 13 on here fine then you can find the value of the tx the sum of this observation that is a 10 plus 13 plus 5.5 plus so on up to 3 so it's a 23 is a 28 31 41 is a 40 42 43 60 62 what is that t of y you can add them here so you can see 5.5 and this is a 13 13 plus 13 26 26 29 30 34 no 30 uh, so 13 26 29 30 40 43 it's my 43 now you can substitute here what is the u of x so tx is 62 and how many observation 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 7 8 over 2 
so 7 28 68 minus 28 is a 34 u of y is 43 minus 28 again they are same so it is my 15 so minimum of them sorry it's a minimum minimum of them will be my 15 so the right answer is my 15 is the right okay look at this another one likelihood function of size n is given to you testing h0 likelihood ratio most powerful test we can start with the h1 over h0 fine so we can start with here what is that this is e raised to power minus because of the sample size n 1 over theta of xi divided by 1 over theta xi the only difference here is here is a theta corresponding to h naught this is the theta corresponding to the h1 fine so what is the h0 h0 uh, h0 is my 1 so the numerator part will be e raised to power summation xi h1 is my here it is minus of this it must be greater than of you can return as the first part also theta is power n of this so that's the constant part which can adjust it here so what is that it is you can see in the numerator part it is my here fine so what is the meaning of that is if you take the logarithm it will be my this case so this is the critical reason of the like mla then they are talking about the l likelihood ratio as well so we have to find the likelihood ratio l of h naught divided by this must be less than of the k l of h naught is already we have computed fine this follows exponential distribution fine so what is the what is the mle of the parameter theta that is a mean which is a constant number fine so the below one is my constant number it is less than k so you can see this is summation of x is less than k take the logarithm you can see summation of x is less than k what is the meaning of that summation of x is greater than k so you can see both have the same number so the likelihood ratio test leads to the same critical reason as of this one so it means this option is cancelled because he said does not exist the last option is the power of the test is lower it is not true because the both the test have the same same critical reason the power of the test must be equal so this option is also cancelled out now look at this option critical reason is given in this form that is first of all this option is cancelled because our critical reason is in the form of greater than k but he said less than so this option is also cancelled correct option is only my a fine okay look at this again a ump test is given to you u h1 l of this so size of n what is h0 oh that's true that's true that's a very simple there is no need to solve look at that h0 is a node of fixed value fine because h0 is not in the form of the equality also you can see h1 is written in the form of this again it is not as a fixed value whenever the h0 and h1 is not given as a fixed equality value then the critical reason that is most powerful test that is this method does not exist fine so what is that at any of value of alpha it does not exist so he said it of the form this which is not true because the critical reason uh, the, the h0 and h1 is not written in the form of basically h0 must be written in the form of the equality so again this is cancel out this is cancel out because the um, most powerful test does not exist so we are not talking about the power of the test so c is my correct option of this example okay uh, now look at this example what is given to you it's a discrete problem fine so it has the four well three values three and here fine then likelihood function is given to you most powerful test you have to start with the hl1 over hl0 what is the likelihood function of this probability x is equal to 3 probability x is equal to 4 probability x is equal to k so what is that it is e raised to power minus lambda 3 over 3 factorial 
e raised to power minus lambda 4 over 4 factorial e raised to power minus lambda k over k factorial. So I can return this as e raised to power minus of 3 lambda. 3 factorial, 4 factorial is my constant number. So lambda raised to power 7 plus k, k factorial is a constant. This is a likelihood. So what is h1? Lambda is not equal to 3. So that means if I consider this is any number of here. Fine. What is h0? 3. So if I substitute here, it is minus 9, 3 raised to power 7 plus k. It must be greater than k. So what is that? e raised to power minus 9 is a constant that's in the written side. This h is not equal to, so I can consider this as say greater than 3. You may consider it as a less than 3. So say 4. So this number is a constant. So I can return this number as uh, k is already there. I can see call as a c. This is my c. So 7 plus k is greater than of the log of c. Fine. Divided by log of lambda by c. So this is another constant c1. So k must be greater than of the c1 minus 7. So k must be greater than c1 minus 7 I consider as another constant c. So k must be greater than of the c. First option cancel, third option cancel. Now look at the whether it is my greater than 4 or 3. What is that for any alpha? So critical reason is my or I consider as x is greater than c under the h naught. So what is that? It is c to infinite exponential distribution e raised to power minus lambda c over c factorial. Fine. Or I consider as x. x start from the c. What is the lambda of the h naught? 3. So I can return as e raised to power minus 3, 3 raised to power c, 3 raised to power x over x factorial. Now you can see, but you have the maximum 3 values. So c must vary from c to 3. So it can never be greater than 4 because it is not. So right answer is my only d is my correct option of this example. So this is the way you can solve this example. I hope you can simply remember these all tricks and you can solve the various lectures. You can simply scan and join my videos lecture. We will see the next lecture on the CSR net testing of the hypothesis. Till then you can simply like, share and comment on my videos. Best of luck students. Happy learning.